right, good morning and welcome to Lionsgate Baptist Church. I'm glad you're here. And uh, we're starting off 2023 uh, in an exciting way. And we're going to be uh, baptizing three here this morning. And we're going to be having, uh, at the end of the service, we're going to be having a few people join the church. And so we're very excited about that. Before we baptize, I just want to say that baptism is it's not a sacrament. Uh, baptism is an ordinance of the church, and it's the next step in obedience. And baptism isn't necessary for salvation. Sometimes people get confused with that. The greatest example is the thief on the cross who uh, Jesus promised would be in heaven with him, even though he would not be able to be, uh, be able to be baptized. But it is the next step of obedience. And publicly, uh, those that are being baptized today want to identify publicly before you as witnesses that they, are, uh, they put their faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ and they identify with his death, his burial, and his resurrection. And they're testifying this morning that they're going to follow the Lord and uh, uh, follow the Lord Jesus Christ uh, with their lives. And we're thankful for that. And we're going to start this, uh, this morning with Liam. So uh, we'll start with Liam. Liam accepted Christ uh, in 2020, June 2020, and it's been a couple years, and uh, he wants to, uh, told me a few weeks ago that he wanted to, you can come on this side over here, over here, told me a few weeks ago that he wanted to follow the Lord in baptism, so I talked to him a little bit, and he understands, um, and we're thankful for um, children that place their faith and trust in Jesus Christ at a young age. And uh, we are, we're happy to be able to have Liam here this morning. Liam, have you trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Yes. Amen. Then on your profession of faith, I baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. We're going to have Liam's big sister, Lindsay. Lindsay was saved in October at her missions conference, and she wants to follow the Lord in baptism. We know in Acts, it says, Then they that gladly received his word, Acts 2, 47, they gladly received his word, were uh, baptized and then added to the church. And so salvation, then baptism, and then adding to the church. And so we want to follow that method. And so Lindsay's going to be uh, baptized here. Lindsay, have you trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Yes, I have. And upon your profession of faith, I baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Lastly, but not least, we have Eliza. Eliza, we're thankful, trusted Christ as her Savior. You come on in. Trusted Christ as her Savior and uh, recently and expressed her desire to be baptized and to join her church. And after their service, she'll be joining the church officially with her husband, Jay, who's taking a video right now. We're excited about that. But uh, Jay has already been saved and baptized, a member of a church like ours who will be transferring, but Eliza needs to be baptized. So Eliza, have you trusted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? Yes. Amen. Then upon your profession of faith, I baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. That's a great way to start 2023, don't you think? Amen. All God's people said? 
Amen. All right. I'm excited. Thank you. Pastor Manny's going to take us and we're going to sing a few songs this morning. So let's stand together and let's sing together. All right. Let's stand this morning as we sing. We're going to be singing in Christ alone. Let's sing it out this morning. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. of love, what depths of peace, when fears are still, when striving cease, my comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand, in Christ alone. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. God sent his son. God sent his son. They called him Jesus. He came to
one more time. Please pray for the all. Our scripture reading this morning is Habakkuk chapter number 2. And so if you have your Bibles, you'd like to turn there, you can. Habakkuk chapter 2, and we're going to read verses 2 and 3. I'd probably give you longer to find it, because you probably, if you're looking for it, you probably <laughs> you might not be able to find it. But Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 2. And the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end of it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. Now, uh, this is our Vision Sunday. We call every year, we have uh, one of the first Sundays of the year, we have a Vision Sunday, and we lay out uh, really a, a road plan uh an idea of what we're going to be doing in 2023. I give a theme. I talk about different things we're going to be doing. And I try to write out that vision that I have in a way that you can see it and you can understand it. And so that when, when you can, you can plan for the year and you can take that vision and you can run with it and you can say, you know what, I'm going to plan my year around the things that are happening at church. And I'm going to make sure that I'm a part of these events and I'm uh, that I'm there and I'm supporting these events that are taking on at, uh, taking place at the church. And it's my goal this year to be able to even do that even more clearly, to be able to 
put those things down so you can have them so you can you can have them and plan for them and invest your uh, you know and revolve your calendar around the things of the church and so we're going to be doing that after the sermon uh, this morning so I hope you're excited about hearing what's going to be happening in 2023 but as a church that's an exciting thing but I just want to for a moment now I know this vision is God's word to Habakkuk and he's supposed to write it down so that people can read it but I'd like to ask you a question this morning as we consider these verses. What's the vision that you have for your life in 2023? What goals do you have? What plans do you have for 2023? And I would, I would like to encourage you to really think about where you want to be at the end of, of this year. Uh, I want to encourage you to to write uh, write them some of those things down and to pray about some of those things and make it plain and really plan it out and take the time to do that because you're not going to grow in the Lord. You're not going to walk closer to Jesus on an accident. It's, it's not going to just be you know, happen by osmosis because you go to a great church and you have your friends with great people. You need to have a purpose and have a plan and then put that plan into action. So I want to encourage you to consider that question this year. What is your vision for your life? Do you want to walk closer to the Lord by the end of 2023? Do you want to have a deeper prayer life in 2023? Do you want to give more for the Lord in 2023? Do you want to be involved more and serve more uh, and serve the Lord more in 2023? Then I want to encourage you to don't just think, oh, that don't, not just have these nebulous ideas, but to really write those things down and pray about those things and ask God to show you how you can implement those things in your life. Growing and, and, and investing in the Lord doesn't just happen by accident. It takes a vision, and it takes a purpose, and you should have a vision for your life. Don't just go through the year and say, well, whatever will be, will be, or whatever happens for happens. Uh, don't, don't go through life like that. Have a plan and have a, a purpose. I want to encourage you with those verses to, to think about that God has a plan for your life. He has a purpose for your life. And you want to uh, really organize those things and plan for those things so you have the greatest 2023 uh, in your personal life that you, that you can have. Uh, that's our scripture reading for this morning. We're going to sing some more songs. So Pastor Manny's going to come. Let's stand together, and we're going to sing a great song for Vision Sunday, Be Thou My Vision. Be Thou My Vision.
God Almighty. Let's sing it out this morning. Holy, holy. Christ alone, I place my trust and find my glory in the power of the cross. In every victory, let it be said of me, my source of strength, my source of hope is Christ alone.
Amen. Thank you, uh, Pastor Manny. It's a great song, and it's a great way to introduce to you our theme for 2023. And if you haven't figured it out yet, it, yet, it's in Christ alone. In Christ alone. And it's our prayer that in 2023, we will keep our eyes and our focus and remember that everything that is done is only done because of Christ. In Christ alone. I'm sure that when you hear these words, many of you might think, th probably think of maybe a song uh, that we sang this morning in Christ Alone at the beginning of our service. But our theme is not that song, but the subject of which those three words point to. The object of our faith is of the utmost importance, and we will focus primarily on that truth, on that truth that we are saved by grace through faith alone in Christ. If you have your Bibles, would you take them this morning and go to 1 Corinthians chapter number 2. 1 Corinthians chapter number 2. And we'll be spending some time today in this uh, book as we consider this subject in Christ alone. 1 Corinthians chapter number 2, and I'm going to begin reading in verse number 1. Now, I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Paul determined to preach about Jesus Christ and Christ alone. Paul had no desire to enter into philo uh, philosophical discussions that would cause uh, strife and division. He purposed to make Jesus Christ the focus of his message. He simply stayed right with the preaching of the cross of Christ. He preached a crucified Savior, one who had died for the sins of the world. Now at this time, many were focusing on quite a, a number of other topics, Topics that would really cause division and even discord amongst the early believers, especially in the church of Corinth. And Paul determined within himself that when he would speak and when he would preach, the focus of his message would always be Jesus Christ. And I just, I know I've said this before at our church. And uh, in, the, in the past, maybe in previous Vision Sundays, but uh, I would just want to say again that Lionsgate Baptist Church must always keep the main thing the main thing. We must always be diligent in preaching about Jesus Christ. There are a lot of issues uh, that abound. There are a lot of things that people talk about on Twitter and uh, Facebook and Instagram and everywhere, you know, you can find that kind of news. There are a lot of things that can distract us as believers. There's a lot of things that can divide us as, as Christians. But the thing that we must always keep first and central and foremost in our church is the preaching of Jesus Christ and his message and his and his gospel. It's that which brings us unity. It's that which we can all agree on uh, at Lionsgate Baptist Church that Jesus Christ is the answer to every person's need. Many are focusing on other things, and we'll just turn back a few pages to the beginning of 1 Corinthians. So if you're in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, just go to 1 Corinthians chapter number 1, and I'd like to read starting in verse number 10. Again, Paul says this in verse 10, Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together 
in the same mind and in the same judgment. Paul again reminds the church at Corinth that there is one thing that unites them together. Many things that could divide, but one thing that unites them together, one thing that can stop the divisions and can perfectly join them together, and that is by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is when we put the focus on Christ that we can speak the same thing, that we can think the same thing, and we can do the same thing. Paul wanted to focus on Christ. In this verse, verses, you might wonder, why is Paul talking about this divisions and so on? And uh, he had been told by the house of Chloe that Paul, uh, that he had been told that there was divisions, there was schism that is taking place in the church of Corinth. And just so you know, when you get a bunch of people together, there is potential for schism. <laughs> there is potential for division because people think differently, they do different things, and they have different behaviors. And sometimes that can cause, uh, that can cause division. And so Paul was told by the house of Chloe that there was divisions taking place in the church of Corinth. We're not really even told what the divisions were all about. It seems like there was some groups forming around different leaders in the church. And some were saying, well, I was, uh, you know, I was baptized by Paul and I was baptized by Cephas and by Apollos. And, and so there was different personalities of people at play. And uh, there was this divisions taking place because some were seemed to be pitting one against the other. I mean, that's why Paul said that it doesn't matter, you know, who baptized you, whether it was Paulus or me or Cephas or so on. We're all baptized by under uh, uh, by the Lord Jesus. And so. You know, he's saying that that's a, that's a small thing, but it was taking place. And we're not really given much more detail than that. And I believe it was, it was that way on purpose. The issues of personality were not, are not given to us. We're not explained why some preferred Paul over Apollos and Cephas and so on. We're not really given those specifics. And I think it was done for, for a reason. Maybe because it was meant to be applied to a larger array of issues that can cause division in the church. Maybe because the issue in which they were disagreeing about wasn't really that important. And many times the issues that cause division and discord in the church really, in the, in the grand scheme of things, aren't really that important. They're actually somewhat minor. Now, we should remember something before we go any further, and I don't want to focus on this for too much this morning, but we should remember something in Proverbs chapter number 6. Proverbs chapter number 6 gives us a list of things that God hates. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't want to be on that, you know, committing one of those things that God hates. I certainly wouldn't want to have anything to do with that. But in that verse, in Proverbs chapter 6, or sorry, chapter in, in verse 19, we see this. A false witness that speaketh lies, and that's, you know, someone that lies, and we get that. God hates that. But the next verse, uh, next part of that verse says, And he that soweth discord among brethren. God hates when one of his, uh, one of his people in his church sows discord among the brethren. That means, you know, they just put it out there. They just sow it, and uh, they're looking for a fight. They're looking to cause division. They're looking to cause problems, and so they bring it up. They, they bring up that disagreement over and over again, trying to cause problems, trying to cause disunity in the church. God says that God hates that thing. He, say, he hates it when someone is sowing discord among the brethren. So just understand that's what God says in, in Proverbs chapter 6. And so before uh, you would ever get to the place where you would be a sower of division in the church, remember it's something that God does not look, uh, he frowns upon, that he hates. But now I want you to take your Bibles and I want you to, we're going to go to our main text this morning in 2 Corinthians. So you're in 1 Corinthians, you're going to go over to 2 Corinthians chapter number 4. Now, we're not going to go through the whole book of 1 Corinthians, but Paul lays out a lot of things trying to help them fix these issues, these issues that are taking place in the church. 
And uh, I guess one letter wasn't enough because he had to write another one. You know, obviously they hadn't figured it out after the first letter, and so he had to write it again. You ever have to do that? You ever have to, have to do the same thing twice? Maybe with your children because they haven't figured it out after the first time. You know, they, they haven't they haven't done right. You know, it's like when you your kids go to school and they get a detention for something. I don't know if they do that anymore, but you know, maybe that's too punitive now. But uh, they give it detention, you know, and then they get the detention for doing the same thing or demerit for doing the same thing. They haven't figured it out. Paul had to write another letter because they haven't quite figured it all out. But 2 Corinthians, I want you to see chapter 4, and we're going to use the first six verses here as our text this morning. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine upon them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of the darkness, has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. You know, it's interesting because in verse number three, we read this verse, but if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. You know what divisions and discord cause when they are present in a church? It causes the gospel of Jesus Christ. It causes it to be muddied. It causes it to be hidden. It causes it to be put in the background where it's not as noticeable because when the world sees a church that's fighting with each other and believers that are, uh, that are in disunity one with another, why would they want anything to do with that? If the followers of Jesus Christ can't even get along, why would they want anything to do with, with, uh, with followers of Christ? And so the gospel is hidden. The gospel gets muddied. It, get, it, it gets put in the, the, uh, the background, and it's not as obvious, and it's not as prevalent. May we as a church always keep the gospel of Jesus Christ first and foremost. May our disagreements and may, uh, uh, and may the things that can cause discord, may they be minor and may they be resolved quickly so that the gospel of Jesus Christ is not muddied, is not hidden. In this letter, in 2 Corinthians, Paul reluctantly is having to defend his ministry. Because whenever somebody tries to fix an issue, usually they're the one of the first people to be attacked. Well, Paul's trying to deal with this issue in Corinth, and of course, he, his integrity, his ministry is put under attack. And unfortunately, he gets to the place where he feels like he has to kind of uh, uh, defend his ministry a little bit. And, and because even his motives were being questioned, even his motives were being attacked. And he was telling them that he wasn't doing things, uh, you know, the, the way that uh, he wasn't doing things for that purpose and for that reason. He was, he was doing it because he was main purpose was the preaching of Jesus Christ. And the religious elite of those days did not approve of Paul. They did not approve of his methods. He was not fitting into their mold. He was doing ministry a lot differently than uh, the way they would have him do it. And so there was, there was uh, questioning happening. There was fighting happening. And uh, the, one of the biggest issues, of course, was the issue of circumcision. Circum, uh, circumcision. Well, man, I'm, my words are messed up this morning. You know what I'm saying. And... Uh, he was, he was one of those biggest issues, and of course Paul was saying that, that was not nece- it wasn't required anymore, and the Jews were saying that it had, what should have been required, and, and the Gentiles were saying, why do we have to do that? It doesn't un- that doesn't make any sense. And, and so there was this fight that was taking place, and of course Paul, when he took a, uh, took a stance on it, he was being questioned for his stance on this issue of circumcision. And so he, he was being attacked, and they weren't approving of his, uh, of his declarations. And Paul defends himself by declaring some simple truths in these verses that we just read. In a sense, this is Paul's you know, manifesto. This is Paul's declaration. And he's telling the church, listen, I want, you to, I want you to get a couple things here. I want you to see a few things here. And I think that we need to see those things here this morning as we think about 2023 and in Christ alone. So if you're taking notes, 
we're going to look at some simple truths that Paul declares in these six verses. First of all, number one, a Christ-centered motivation. A Christ-centered motivation. Notice in verse number five, Paul says, For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord. We preach not ourselves. This was a stinging rebuke to the false teachers of those days. And the simple fact is, if you don't preach Christ, then you will preach yourself. If you don't preach Christ, you will preach yourself. James Denny said, No man can show Christ powerful to save and himself clever at the same time. In Christ alone. Church member, understand that your leaders, that your pastors need help in this area. It is good to encourage your teachers. It is good to share with your pastors that you're blessed with their ministry. It's good to let your deacons know that you love them and that you care for them. But hero worship has no place in the life of the church. Putting, uh, putting leadership on a pedestal by which no man can, uh, can measure up and no man can, can live up to, honestly, is, is the wrong thing to do. Yes, we should love our leaders and we should care for them and we should pray for them, but we ought not to put them in the place that they are not meant to be because it is in Christ alone that you are saved. It is in Christ alone that you are forgiven. It is Christ alone that you can serve. Honestly, like Paul, I can truly say uh, with you that I am with you in weakness and in fear. Paul said that I am with you in weakness and in fear and trembling. Paul said, I'm not, I'm nothing special. I'm like you. I, I have the same fears you have. I have the same concerns you have. I'm doing life the same way that you're doing life. The things that you worry about and that you struggle with, I struggle with those things too. I was with you in fear and I was with you in trembling. And you need to remember that your leaders are like you. They're human. They think like you. They act like you. They fear like you. They have the same needs that you have. And Paul said, I'm, I'm here. Uh, I, I'm, I'm struggling just like I struggle just like you. I, I'm in weakness and in fear. And that is why Paul determined. He said, I declared I am going to preach Christ and Christ alone. He did not desire to preach himself. He did not desire to preach his own opinion. He did not desire to preach his ideas of what, uh, of what he thinks people should do. His desire was to preach Christ. Why is it so important that we preach not ourselves? Well, we can give at least three reasons this morning. First, because we cannot save sinners. A pastor cannot save you. <laughs> pastor Manny can't save you. Brother Ronnie and Brother Randy, great deacons at our church, they can't save you. The only person, the only person that can save you is Jesus Christ in Christ alone. That's why the local church must be built on Christ. It's why he must be preached and he must be lifted up and magnified. And, and that's why the church, that's why Lionsgate Baptist Church needs to be built on Christ, not on men. Not on a man, on Christ. Second, not only because a pastor or because leaders cannot save you from your sins, but second of all, because we will be gone one day. Your leaders may not outlive you. <laughs> one day, I might be gone and you might still be here. What then? What will happen then? Christ will not leave. There's no guarantees that you'll have Pastor Towns with you for the rest of your life. There's no guarantees that I'll be able to do your funeral and preach to your family at that moment. There's no guarantees. I don't even, I'm not even guaranteed of today and guaranteed of tomorrow. Our life is but a vapor. That's why we need to make sure that the local church is built on the Lord Jesus Christ and not a personality and not a, uh, not a person because Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. And third, because leaders fail. 
If you've been to our church long enough, you know that I probably failed you. I've probably forgotten something. I, I probably forgot your birthday or forgot an anniversary or I said something that you uh, that you th- thought was hurtful or that you took that way. And I want you to know that I don't intend ever to let you down. I don't intend ever to fail you, but I'm human and I will. I was telling the deacons the other day we had lunch and I was telling, I think it was yesterday actually, telling me that I was reading in my devotions about the, the great, uh, the good shepherd, Jesus, the good shepherd. And it says that, when, when the dangers would come, the good shepherd, he'll, fi- he'll, he'll stay and he'll fight, right? He will protect the sheep. He'll lay down his life for the sheep. And, it, and the verse, it goes on and it talks about the hireling. The hireling says, well, these aren't my sheep. I'm out of here. These aren't, this isn't, I'm not laying down my life for the sheep. I'm just, I'm just getting paid, right? Most of you might like your job, but you wouldn't lay down your life for your job. You know, so you're just getting paid. You're a hireling. It's not that important to you. And I was challenged because, you know, the word pastor, it means shepherd or under shepherd. And I was challenged personally that uh, that I don't want to be just a hireling, you know, They're just, you know, it's just my job. I'm just getting paid nine to five. You know, I do a thing. I go home and then and then I'm off the clock. No, I want to be I want to be uh, like the Lord Jesus. I want to lay down my life for the sheep. I want to be that shepherd that's the good shepherd. And I want to do that for you. I want to do that. I never want to fail you. I never want to let you down. But. I will. I will. I will. As much as I try, I, pr- I will. Because I, I am not Christ. I am not perfect. I am not sinless. And even the greatest pastor and even the greatest preacher that you can think of is only a man, an imperfect, sinful man. The only way to do so is to ensure that Christ is our personal focus. To remember that he uh, can be lifted up and he can be magnified and you can put him on a pedestal and he'll never fail you. He'll never let you down. That's why it's in Christ alone. Like John the Baptist, when Christ came, the forerunner of Christ, he said, he must increase, but I must decrease. He must increase, but I must decrease. Paul makes this statement in verse 5, for we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus. He had a Christ-centered motivation. And Lionsgate, we need to have a Christ-centered motivation in 23. Christ-centered motivation. Not, uh, not ourselves, not any man, not any personality, but the Lord Jesus Christ. And as we begin this year, may we look to the author and finisher of our faith. May we look to Christ in this 2023. But I want you to see not only a Christ-centered motivation, but I want you to see, number two, a Christ-centered message. A Christ-centered message. You know, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, buildings in North Vancouver that have the word church on them. You can just drive around. You'll see them. Church, 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 church all over the place. Many of them will not have a Christ-centered message. In fact, you could visit them and you might never hear about Christ. You might hear about whatever subject is popular or in the news, but you might not hear about Christ. Now, I'm thankful for every church that preaches Christ even if they're not exactly like us, even if there's different than us. And I'm thankful for every church that preaches the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is a Christ-centered message. We read that in verse 5. We preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord. Now, preaching is another word for proclaiming. He preached, he proclaimed Christ Jesus As Lord. And that's the two words we're going to kind of focus on for this for a few minutes here is that Jesus Christ as Lord. In Christ alone is so important because Jesus is not just a man. He is Lord. Our message must be the same. We must understand and declare that Jesus is Lord and we are not. He alone is worthy of worship because he is Lord. He is worthy of our service because he is Lord. He alone can save because he is Lord. The need to declare Jesus Christ is evident 
in the Great Commission. But, uh, and we read, often time we read in Matthew 28 and 19 and 20, you know, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. And we love those verses, but we, for, we overlook verse 18 when Jesus says, all authority has been given unto me in heaven and in earth. This is Jesus. All authority has been given to him. Why? Because he is Lord. And our Lord has given us a message to proclaim, to preach. We are to preach the gospel because he is the Lord, because our Lord has instructed us to teach the good news of Jesus Christ. Our message is predicated on his lordship. Our message is predicated on his lordship. If Jesus wasn't Lord, he wouldn't worth he wouldn't be worthy of the time that we are giving him today. He would just be another man, maybe even a, another prophet. You know, there's a, there's a lot of religions out there. Islam will teach you that Jesus is a great prophet. He's a great man. But the difference that we have than Islam is that we teach that Jesus Christ is Lord. He is the Son of God. He is God. Our message is predicated on his lordship. And if we don't preach him as Lord, we will preach a false gospel. Acts chapter 4 and verse 12 says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Why should you give your life to Jesus Christ? Why should you call upon Jesus Christ to save you from your sins? Why should you believe his words and accept his claims? Because he is Lord. He's God. And if you try to get to heaven apart from Jesus Christ, you are without hope. In our pluralistic world, this is a very relevant issue. In the midst of relativism, and in the midst of relativism of our day, and that's kind of like there are many ways to get to heaven. There are many paths that you can take. We're all going to end up in the great glory beyond. That idea of relativism, there is a great need for the church to resurrect its confidence in the exclusivity of Jesus Christ. We need to remember that there is no other way. There is no other name. Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Church, we have the message of Jesus Christ. You can't go at, you can go to McDonald's and get a, get a great hamburger, but you're not going to get the message of Jesus Christ. You can go to Wendy's and have some great fries and get a great burger, but you're not going to get the message of Jesus Christ. You can go to, you know, uh, watch the hockey game and, and go watch the Vancouver Canucks play downtown, but you're not going to hear about Jesus Christ. We have the message of Jesus Christ, and we need to do the, we need to do the job of proclaiming it in our communities. And we need to have that confidence in the exclusivity of Jesus Christ. We need to remember that every Sunday we meet is an opportunity for someone to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ, the good news of Jesus Christ. You need to remember that every day you go to work is the opportunity to share with someone the good news of Jesus Christ. If you don't do it, who will? Who will? There's not that many places to find the good news of Jesus Christ. There's not that many places where you're going to hear about his death, burial, and resurrection and find uh, the answers for eternity and know that you're going to heaven. People can go around North Vancouver and they can even go to places that have church on their name and not hear the good news. Just down the road here, there's a united church. You go there, there's people that go there every Sunday. They're not going to hear about Jesus Christ. They're not. They can be so close to here. They can be literally a block and a half from here. They can go to that church and they can go home and say, well, that was a wonderful service. That was great, but not hear about Jesus Christ. God forbid that ever happens at Lionsgate Baptist Church. The only reason we have, that, we have the, the, that we should meet is because of Jesus Christ. Brian Chapel says a sermon is Christ-centered not because it always cites the name of Jesus or draws some to mind some event from his earthly ministry because it demonstrates the reality of the human predicament that requires divine salvation. 
It reminds us of the gospel. He also says that preachers are always to preach with a fallen condition focus. That is, we must always point people to the truth that we are hopeless apart from Christ. Our sin has rendered us spiritually dead, and Christ is the only Savior who can rescue us from the predicament. Salvation through Christ must be preached because everyone needs to be saved and everyone needs to be pointed to Christ to find that salvation. But Christ needs to continue to be preached because Christ's followers need the reminder to keep looking to Christ, to keep telling others about Christ. J. Adams said, You must not exhort your congregation to do whatever the Bible requires of them, as though they could fulfill those requirements on their own, but only as a consequence of the saving power of the cross and the indwelling, sanctifying power and presence of Christ in the person of the Holy Spirit. All preaching to be Christian must fully take into consideration God's grace in salvation and in sanctification. May this be a place where Christ The gospel of Christ will be taught clearly where someone can come and hear the good news that only Christ can give. And one of the church's main purposes and ministries is to keep us dependent upon Christ. One of the church's main purposes and ministry is to keep us dependent upon Christ. You know why it's so important to be faithful to church to go hear the message, the word of God preached and proclaimed because we need to be reminded that Christ is Lord, that he is God, and he is worthy of our love, and he is worthy of our service and our dedication, and he is worthy of our focus. He is worthy to be the Lord of our lives. We ask you this morning, is he the Lord of your life? This, do you know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior? Has there ever been a time where you've accepted Christ and you believed on him and you've called upon him to save you? You've given your heart and your life to the Lord Jesus. Today can be the day on this Vision Sunday. But Christian, is he the Lord of your life? Is what he wants, what truly matters to you, do you want to serve him? Do you want to follow him? Do you want to do what he wants He wants for your life? Because you ought to. The only reason you can come to church and have joy and peace and you can say amen is because of what Jesus Christ has done for you. The scriptures point us to Christ. What will result or what will happen if the church fails to preach Christ as Lord? What would happen if Lionsgate Baptist Church failed to continue to preach Christ as Lord? Well, the outcome will be, will be what you see maybe in other places. It'll be moralism, self-help programs, self-salvation. Experience will ultimately become the authority And preaching will be at rather than to people. We miss the entire point of Scripture if we don't keep ourselves focused on the author and finisher of our faith. I want you to remember that even in 2023, in this new age, biblical preaching is always relevant. Biblical preaching is always relevant because Christ is relevant always relevant it's important what we're doing here it's important what happens here every Sunday every Sunday morning you say pastor but there's not a lot there's not a lot of people here why why is if it's so important why aren't there why why isn't this place packed out every single Sunday why aren't there more people here well Because people love darkness rather than light. No one wants to be told they're wrong. Nobody wants to be told that they're sinning. 
It takes a humble attitude. It takes a, 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 a mind of humility to, to admit that you're a sinner, to admit that your sin has caused you to fall short of God's, judge, uh, God's holiness, and because of that sin, you should be judged. Nobody wants to be hear that. Nobody wants to be told that. Everybody wants to be right in their own eyes. They want to make their own decisions. They don't want to be responsible to a God. They want to be their own gods. We live in a day of humanism. People are their own gods. They don't want to be told. But that doesn't mean that there's not people that are looking. People that are searching. And we're told in Scripture that if someone is looking and seeking and, and, and they're looking for, for Christ, that he, they will find them. And Lionsgate needs to be a place where when somebody comes in, because they're looking for God, they're looking for answers, they're looking for help, they will find that help in Jesus Christ. Not in a program, not in a person, not in whatever you can fill in that list, but in Jesus Christ. What results when we preach Christ? If we keep Christ the focus, if we preach him, what results? When Christ is held up before people, it results in a Christ-centered and a Christ-dependent church. It results in a Christ-centered and a Christ-dependent church. A church that is dependent on Christ alone. Christ alone. I want you to see number three this morning. We're almost done. Number three this morning, a Christ-centered manner. A Christ-centered manner. Paul had a Christ-centered manner. How do you know that? Well, if we look back at Romans chapter number, or sorry, what am I saying? I'm thinking about Sunday school. In first, uh, Second Corinthians chapter 4 and verse number 5, For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord. And now notice the next part of this verse. Verse number five, and ourselves, your servants, for Jesus' sake. Ourselves, your servants, for Jesus. Think about this for a minute. The church of Corinth was messed up. The church of Corinth was not being spiritual at all. They were being carnal. They were there was divisions. There was discords. Paul had the right to, you know, lay the hammer down. Be like, hey, you foolish Corinthians. Smarten up. You know, drop the hammer on him. <laughs> really give him a piece of his, his mind. But he doesn't do that. He, he humbly approaches them with humility. And he even says in this verse, and ourselves, your servants ourselves your servants paul said i will be your servant they didn't deserve to be served they were they were a miserable lot they didn't deserve his service they didn't deserve his love and his humility and his humbleness but notice what he says he doesn't say okay i'm here i'm going to be your servant and that's it he goes on and he says your servants for jesus sake for Jesus sake you know what I'm going to serve you I'm here I'm going to serve you not because you deserve to be served but because of Jesus of Jesus you know I'm here not because and don't take this the wrong way all right I show up here every Sunday and I preach every Sunday and, and I, and I want to serve you as much as I possibly humanly can every single week. And, and I want to do that, but it's not because of you. I don't want to serve you because of you. I want to do it for Jesus' sake. I'm your servant because of Jesus' sake. Do you understand? I don't want you to take that the wrong way. <laughs> I do care about all of you, and I love, I, love, I, I love you. I really do in the Lord. I can say that truthfully. I love you in the Lord. And I want to be your, I want to serve you. I want to help you. And I know the leaders at our church and our deacons, they want to serve you and they want to help you. But they do it because of Jesus' sake. You know, what, you know why people get 
they get hurt and they get bitter and they take off and they leave and they do because they're not serving with the right motivation, with the right manner. They're doing it for themselves. They're not doing it for Jesus' sake. They're doing it because they're getting something out of it. Maybe they like somebody saying, oh, you're doing a great job. You're, you know, you're doing a great job. We love you. Pastor, you're the greatest thing that ever walked this planet Earth, <laughs> you know. Deacons, we love you, you know. We just love you. You're doing such a great job. And, uh, and then something happens, you know, and not, that doesn't, that's not how it always works, right? You make a mistake, and all of a sudden somebody, you know, they see, and they say something, and they get hurt. It happens. We all get hurt. We've all been hurt at times in our life, and that's going to happen. Leaders get hurt. Deacons get hurt. Pastors get hurt. Church people get hurt. Tenders get hurt, and they leave, and they, they go, what happened? They weren't doing it for the Lord. They were doing it for some other reason. Paul said, I'm, a, I'm your servant for Jesus' sake. He did not see himself in, in any way superior to the, Corinthian, uh, to the Corinthian believers. Actually, if you go back to uh, chapter 1 in 1 Corinthians, verse number 24, he tells them that he is a fellow worker, a fellow laborer with them. He didn't see himself as being superior to them in any way. Even when confronting them about their divisions, he was doing it in a very humble manner. He was doing it with love. In many ways, this is the key in keeping, uh, it, this is it, the key in keeping the church focused on Christ alone because it exemplifies who Jesus Christ is. Because think about it, Jesus Christ is our greatest example. He humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. He humbled himself and he served his creation. He served a creature that he created. And in fact, he died for them. And he died for you and he died for me and he humbled himself and the mind of Christ is a humble mind and he served you and me and he even washed his own disciples' feet. Ugh. He washed his own disciples' feet. The master watching, uh, washing the feet uh, of the servants. But he did that because he was humble. And he proved it when he went to the cross. And we are never more like Christ than when we serve each other, even when they don't deserve to be served. And if we're all honest, none of us deserve to be served. There's not one person in here that deserves to be served, that deserves to be waited on. We went to uh, the restaurant yesterday, and we have a waiter. Uh, don't you like going to a restaurant and having somebody just waiting on you? They bring you drinks. They, you feel like a king. Like, it's a, like, you know, I mean, you're paying money, so it's not, you know, I get that. But you feel pretty special when you go to a restaurant, and they have somebody waiting on you. But you don't deserve that. <laughs> They're just doing it because you're willing to pay them. There's only one person that deserves everything that is spoken of him, everything that is given to him, and that's our Lord, Jesus Christ. And the only reason we ought to really serve one another, yes, we're to love one another, but we do it for Jesus' sake. Because I don't deserve it. You don't deserve it. Paul had a Christ-centered manner. He followed the example of Christ. And he wanted to live and minister as Christ did with an attitude of a servant. All of us, as we begin 2023, need to see ourselves as a slave, as a servant. We're all servants of our Lord Jesus Christ. We're all slaves. It's not that great thinking of us being a slave, right? Not that great thinking about being a servant. That's not like an honoring position. But we're all slaves. We're all servants of the Lord. To see oneself as a slave of other res requires that we are focused on Christ alone. If you feel focus on Christ, you will serve other people. If you keep your focus on the Lord, you will be a slave to other people. 
And that's what it requires. And you need to maintain this focus so that you can keep serving, so that you can keep going forward, committed to the Lord. This helps us to have a Christ-like tone, a Christ-like manner as we proclaim a Christ-centered text. May we always be filled with humility and humbleness as we consider Christ. When we pursue Christ alone and preach Christ alone, we will desire to please Christ alone as we serve others. And so as 2023 begins, can we lift up Christ? Can we look to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith? And can we worship him as he deserves to be worshiped? And can we lift him up as he deserves to be lifted up? Because only he alone is worthy. In 2023, in Christ alone, let us proclaim the supremacy of Christ. Let us keep our eyes on the object of our faith. Let us keep our focus on that author and finisher of our faith. He has the keys to heaven. He alone is worthy. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we're thankful for these verses, these statements made by Paul in 2 Corinthians. Lord, he gives us quite the, the demonstration, he gives us quite the manifesto of his life. And may we as Paul desire to preach Christ, to preach the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ, and him alone. There's a lot of things that can distract us. There's a lot of things that we can disagree about. There's a lot of things that can cause discord. But Lord, we're thankful that we can find unity in you. Unity in Christ. Lord, may we follow you. May we worship you as Lord. Lord, we love you. And as we begin this year, we pray that this year would be the greatest year in our own lives as we put our focus on you and you alone. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to ask the piano to begin to play and I'm give you the opportunity to respond. If you're here this morning and you don't know for sure that Jesus Christ is your Savior, there's never been a time where you put your belief, your trust in Him, I want to encourage you that He is the way, He's the truth, He's the life. I want to encourage you that Jesus is the only way to be saved. He's the only way to know that you're going to heaven. All you do is have to acknowledge your sin and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. You can know you're going to heaven believer would you pray that 2023 will be a year where you focus on the Lord on Christ as you go to work you'll proclaim Christ with your life with your words that you'll make decisions that will honor the Lord will prove that he is Lord of your life you follow him determined in 2023 to serve others, not because they deserve to be served, but because of Jesus, because of his sake, this, that you would determine, you know what, 2023, I'm going to be a servant. I'm going to be a servant. I'm going to serve others because of what Jesus has done for me.
Amen. You can uh, look this way. Well, uh, it's not a Vision Sunday unless we uh, cast some vision for 2023. And uh, that's what we want to take a few moments uh, doing uh, this morning. And um, the Lord's really uh, given, uh, given us some, some thoughts and some ideas for this year. We're excited to be able to announce those things in just a moment. I do want to, there's a few things that aren't really on the, the, the slides or on the list, but uh, this year we really plan on uh, really pushing our outreach and uh, evangelism for North Vancouver 2023, specifically online. And now that we have uh, Jacob, who has that uh, skill and talent uh, that I lack uh, in that area, uh, we're going to be running a lot of online advertisements uh, starting uh, in this month and starting in February, we're going to be uh, actually uh, updating our website so it gives an accurate uh, depiction of who we are and uh, what we do. And so we're going to be doing that in January and in February, we're going to be doing online ads and uh, we're going to be uh, possibly uh, doing actually we're going to be doing some mailings in March. Uh, in the spring and try to hit some areas. Uh, it is a little bit dependent on uh, on some some f- a few things, but uh, we're just praying for the Lord's will in, in some of these uh, in some of these areas. So we're really going to be pushing that online presence, trying to let people know that we're here. Because the number one comment that I get at our church is when I ask the visitor, "How do you know we're here?" Uh, they find out because of a sign they drive by or something like that. But a lot of times they're like, "I've been here years and I didn't know you were here," and that hurts. When I find out that there's people that would come to our church and they don't know that we're here, that really uh, drives me crazy. So we're going to really try to push that and let people know that uh, we're here. I do want to, uh, Pastor Manny, you have the uh, calendars for 2023. And so we have a calendar for every family. And uh, it's a magnet, so you can stick it on your fridge. If you have a, uh, uh, what's what kind of fridge? Uh, stainless steel, you have to stick it on the side of your fridge. Uh, but I'll give you this uh, magnet. And don't look at it yet, all right? Don't look at it. Once you have the magnet, don't look at it. All right, so uh, just a couple announcements, uh, regular announcements. I want to remind you this Wednesday night at 7 p.m., we're going to have our midweek service. We're, we're going to be observing the Lord's uh, Supper, the Lord's Table. So this Wednesday night, I want to encourage you, church family, to be here. We're going to be observing, uh, observing the Lord's Table for the first time in 2023. And so church members, make sure you're, you're here for this Wednesday, uh, Wednesday night. Everyone got that? Yes, sir? Uh, yes, Pastor, we got that. Lord's Table this Wednesday night at 7 p.m., And then uh, we do have a men's uh, breakfast scheduled for January the 14th. And so it'll be January 14th at 9 a.m. And we're just going to be doing it at my house. If we have a lot of guys show up, then we'll move the future. We'll move the future ones. But hopefully we can squeeze in at my home. Uh, But January the 14th at 9 a.m. So those are kind of the upcoming uh, announcements. And then ladies retreat. There is a ladies retreat. There's a sign up sheet. Aaron is wanting to know who is planning on coming and wants to stay in an Airbnb close by. She needs you to sign up uh, as soon as possible. You say, I don't know if I'm coming. If you think you're coming, would you sign up? My wife will be looking for an Airbnb so that you don't have to make the drive back and forth and you can spend some time away from your family and kids. I'm sure some of you wouldn't mind that. Uh, but uh, you want, I need you to sign up. So if you want to stay in the Airbnb, we need to make sure we can book something large enough for, for everybody. Uh, and so please sign up as soon as possible. All right. I have some slides, so uh, we have, oh, I can't even read that probably, right? Um, But they're kind of small. Maybe you can read it. But I'm calling them growth events for 2023. We're going to be having regular youth activities, regular uh, men's breakfasts, youth activities, uh, ladies, we're calling them ladies nights out. Uh, They're going to be pretty, uh, those will be happening pretty monthly. Uh, we have a men's retreat in March. Um, looking forward to that. Uh, has been a little while since we've been able to have that men's retreat. We do it out at Camp Square uh, in Hope, and so looking for, forward to that. We have our spring revival, April 16th through the 18th, and that's always a special time at our church. We have our guest, uh, our friend, Dr. Stone, with us for that. 
We have the ladies retreat, April 20th through 22nd. Again, please sign up if you'd like to stay at an Airbnb uh, down there. I think, where is the ladies retreat taking place? Delta. So it's down there, uh, South Delta, I think near Tawasan even. So I uh, want to do that. Uh, we have some young adults activities uh, going to be having regularly. Uh, there's Camp Yes Junior Week uh, is scheduled to take place, Lord willing, at, uh, at Point Roberts Bible Camp and then Camp Yes uh, Teen Week. If those of you that are new to our church, you might not know this, but we do own a campground in uh, down in Point Roberts. Uh, it's just really it should be Canada, but we own a campground down there. And uh, we, uh, I'm on the board with uh, a few other churches in the area. And so that's looking forward to finally being able to use that property again this year in 2023. All right, next uh, slide. Uh, we have some church picnics planned. We have a missions conference October 19th through 22nd. Northwest Youth Conference is November 9th through 11th. Marriage retreat, November 17th through the 18th. Uh, those should be dates. Uh, some other events that don't have dates and they're not really on the calendar, but we're planning on having in 2023, we're going to be having a parenting class, a parenting class. So all you parents, we're going to be uh, doing another parenting class this year. We're excited for that. It's not going to be the same one that we've done before. It's a, it'll be a different program, uh, but I know some of the parents are going, I could use that. So we're going to have that this year ministry uh, planning meetings and so we're going to be meeting and that just means uh, I'm going to be meeting with those of you that are in charge of uh, and having training with those of you that are in charge of nursery those of you that are in charge of uh, coast kids and other programs that are church uh, staff and volunteer training discipleship and uh, counseling is also available uh, Lord's, uh, Lord's table, we're going to be happening, uh, usually we do it four times a year or at once every three months. Um, and then Coast Kids activities are also going to be planned and implemented as well. All right. Again, like I said, we want to have a lot of outreach this year, and so we want to be busy in that area. We're going to be doing a big push for our anniversary Sunday, which is uh, February the 19th, and we're going to call it a open house anniversary Sunday. Uh, really uh, try to push that service, try to get visitors to come and uh, let, let people know that we're here and we're excited for that. So February the 19th, our plan is to have some some swag, uh, some Lionsgate branded stuff that we're going to have for that service. So uh, lots of exciting things uh, for that plan. Uh, we're planning on having an Easter presentation on April the 9th, first time for our church. And uh, we've, we're have we going to be starting to actually start getting ready for that uh, pretty soon here because Easter comes quickly. And uh, we want to have a program and have outreach for that service. And so we're going to be having an Easter drama presentation April the 9th. Summer outreach, so summer evangelism, all of July and all of August. We go out on Wednesday nights and hand out uh, invitations, letting people know that we're here. And uh, so we're going to be doing our Reach North van and, and trying to let people know that we're here, uh, if we're here, Lord willing. Um, and then uh, we plan on doing a Christmas presentation again, November the 9th and uh, the 10th is the plan to do it those services so we really want to uh, be able to do that again all of those will be major outreach events taking place at Lionsgate Baptist Church in 2023 all right new events of note we're planning on doing a youth rally with other churches uh, in our area on May the 20th this is really um, Jacob Aquino's uh, vision and dreams so he'll be running this but we're going to do that so we're going to have a youth rally May the 20th Here's the big one. We are planning on starting family camp, family camp in uh, July. It'll be July 20th through the 22nd. So it's a Thursday night and a Friday night. Um, so we are planning on hosting it at our campground in Point Roberts. So that means some of you might need to apply and get a visa if you're a permanent resident, uh, but you're not a citizen. You would have to apply and get a visa. Uh, you can do that. I know there's some in our church that have done that. They can help you, I'm sure, with that. Um, and but if you're if you're a permanent uh, resident, or sorry, if you're a Canadian citizen, you have no problems. You have to cross the border. But we're planning on having it uh, July the 20th through the 22nd. Um, and we do have cabins available. We have staff cabins that we'll be using uh, available. Um, and then tenting will also be an option for you if your family is adventurous and you love 
sleeping in a tent, you can do that as well. Uh, there will be different prices based on which one you prefer. We do have limited openings, you know, so uh, we'll, we'll sort out all those details. We'll give you all those details. But if you want to plan ahead and get that uh, Friday off work uh, so you can be a part of our first family camp. All right. So pray for us as we get ready for that. Uh, looking forward to it. All right. And then uh, men's breakfast, ladies activities, teen activities, young adult uh, activities will be conducted regularly. I'm just saying that we plan on having them pretty uh, monthly, at least monthly. Um, and then uh, other major uh, announcements, Pastor, uh, Pastor Navarro and Danielle will be leading our young adults. They've already been doing that, but uh, they're going to be kind of organizing and running our young adults. We have quite a few now and we're thankful for that. So they'll be running that. And then Jacob and Dana Aquino will be uh, taking over as uh, youth leaders. And so I will be working with them in, the, in that transition. But honestly, they're going to give it the, the time that the teenagers deserve. And uh, they're going to do a great job. And so I'll be working with them in that. Um, and because Jacob still has, Dana will be working full time. I'll still be helping them. But uh, they'll be taking the lead and organizing and planning our teen activities. And hopefully... Uh, have activities where we can invite other teenagers to come and where our teenagers can invite other teenagers to come and try to build that youth group and uh, bring people into the church uh, that way. And uh, teenagers, you know, they really need the, the Lord and they need the Lord in 2023. And uh, some of our teens are great at making friends and we want to invite them and have some times of teaching and uh, teaching them about Jesus and preaching and uh, see if we can get some teenagers saved in 2023. So uh, lots of plans in that area. Is there any more? Is that the last one? That's the last one. All right. So uh, if you'll see, uh, you have your magnet there. You can see not everything is on this. All right. And um, and uh, so, you know, if this is not the law, that means like this is the only activities we're happening. But these are the ones that we have in stone. Uh, these are the ones that, um, uh, you know, where maybe you need to take a day off work or so on. Uh, so you can plan ahead. You have all of 2023 uh, there set out all the major things. And hopefully this will help you. This will be a tool for you to know how uh, to plan your year for 2023. Okay. So yeah, biggest, I think the biggest new event is pro probably for our church is a uh, family camp. Um, and uh, I should say at this point, we're planning on kind of keeping it smaller, maybe just our church. Uh, it depends on how many people are coming. Uh, we might open it up to other churches as, but we want for the first year, we really want, the plan is to open it up eventually. But for the first year, uh, we'll keep it a little bit small just so we can organize and plan for it. Now, that means you can invite people. I'm fine with that. Um, but I mean, as far as opening up to other churches in the area, uh, we're not quite sure if we're going to be doing that yet. It'll depend on us. Uh, but we'll we'll be signing. Uh, we'll have all sign up sheets for that. Uh, if you're planning on coming, we'll make sure we get that organized as we make plans uh, for this event in uh, 2023. Again, we really want to focus on outreach this year. All of these events, we want to use them to um, get new people to find out about us, to hear about the good news of Jesus Christ. And uh, want to see our church uh, move forward this year and uh, see our church add, uh, add, see the people be added to the church and uh, really uh, see our church solidified here on the North Shore. Again, pray for the building situation. Uh, a lot of these events are going to take place no matter what happens. Uh, but we are talking about uh, this uh, building situation with the Chinese uh, Mennonite Brethren Church. So those might change a few things, how things look. But we still plan on having all of these uh, events no matter uh, where we're meeting or what we're doing in 2023, okay? So please uh, make sure if you didn't get one, make sure you grab one and uh, take it with you. Uh, one per family, that'd be great. That way we have extras that we can hand out uh, to visitors in in the future. All right. Well, before we are uh, the leave, we do have uh, something that we need to do. And so I'm going to ask Jay and Eliza and uh, where's the other two? Uh, Liam and Lindsay, would you come up here? Yeah, come on. You guys can come up here. You just stand here. Two, you can stand over here. Two, you can stand over here. Perfect. All right. Well, we're thankful to, uh, again, we're thankful to be able to baptize today. 
and they want you to move closer. I think is that what you're? They want to, yeah. They want a better picture. So it's all about the photos, right? It's all about that social media, that cred. So, anyways, we're thankful. Uh, we're thankful for Liam and Lindsay, of course, been coming to our church for a long time, and uh, they will be joining our church, and uh, they'll be able to vote once they're old enough. Um, I think what's voting age for Lionsgate? What's the voting age? Is it 18 or is it 16? Is it 16? Uh, anyways, I'll, I'll check the, I should know that. But anyways, <laughs> uh, they'll be joining our church. They've been coming to our church for a long time, but officially joining our church. And uh, they'll be able to vote one day once they're old enough and uh, thankful for them. And then uh, Jay and Eliza. And uh, Jay uh, was saved uh, and was a member of a church in the Philippines. He's new to Canada, newer to Canada. Got to experience snow for the first time. Uh, and so that's exciting. And uh, he wants to uh, get back to church and, and uh, wants to join us here. And his wife, of course, was saved and just baptized. And uh, so, Eliza, you're joining by uh, baptism, and we're thankful for that. And Jay is joining by uh, uh, testimony and transfer. And uh, so we would like to welcome all four of these to Lionsgate Baptist Church. So let's welcome them. <laughs> now, I, I do want to say that Lionsgate Baptist Church is not a perfect church. I am not a perfect pastor. But we are uh, a people that desire to serve the Lord and please the Lord. And we want to do that together. And uh, we're thankful that you're joining with us together and joining our family here. And uh, we want to serve the Lord together. And we're excited that we get to do that uh, for years to come. And so welcome to, uh, welcome, I'm going to come out here. Welcome to, uh, officially welcome to Lionsgate Baptist Church. Lindsay, welcome. Welcome. <laughs> Eliza, Welcome. Welcome. And Jay, welcome to Lionsgate Baptist Church. So awesome. Thank you so much. You guys can you guys can be that's it. Easy, right? Not that hard. So great way to start off the new year, adding people to the church. We're excited for that. If you have any questions about uh, uh, membership, uh, I am always available. Uh, happy to ask uh, answer it. Sorry, ask answer any questions that you have about uh, church membership. Um, and if you don't have a church and you're looking for a church, Lionsgate Baptist Church is a great church. If you're visiting with us, thank you for being here. Uh, and uh, if you are uh, visiting with us and if you haven't filled out one of those, uh, they should have gave you one. But if you haven't filled one of those, we'd love to have a record of your visit so we can thank you for coming. Thanks for, uh, we had a long, a uh, little bit over time today, but thanks for being patient this morning. We're thankful for uh, this, this, the, all that we were able to, to happen this morning. I want to encourage you to have a great day, and we'll see you on Wednesday night for the Lord's Table. God bless. You're dismissed.